All right, guys, so what I want to do in this video is quickly go over some of our magnetic field formulas that you're going to see throughout um, these chapters, right? So we have a few here. I'm just going to quickly break down each one. They all have some similar parts. The first three formulas I'm going to show you are all from magnetism, okay, or magnetic fields that are induced by moving charges, right? So usually by current in a wire. So in this first formula right here, I have some wire. We're gonna say that this wire is infinitely long, right? So that you know we don't consider anything in weird going on on the ends, on the outsides. Um, so we just have this infinitely long current carrying wire and any wire that has a current moving through it will generate a magnetic field, right? So here, this wire is generating a magnetic field that loops around it in a circular fashion. You can see that we just kind of make rings around our wire. Okay, so that's what's going on here with these wires that carry current, the, the fields that they make. They're very strong here near the wire, but then as they get further and further away, at some radius away from the wire, they are going to drop off in strength significantly, right? So, and the way that we express that is with this formula right here. So I here is my current, okay? And this is in amps. And R is the distance from the wire. Okay, the other thing here is the direction. So how do I know that this here is moving in this sort of counterclockwise looking direction versus clockwise. So the way we do this here is our right hand rule. This is a different right hand rule from our moving charges in a magnetic field. In this, you will take, let's say, I'm gonna draw a hand here, as if you were kind of, oops, not a triangle. <laughs> All right, let's say we take our hand and we loop it around our wire here and what's gonna happen is here's my thumb your thumb is going to point in the direction of the current so if you were to grab this wire and point your thumb in the direction that the current is moving in then in this case your fingers would have to curl around this way in order to grab the wire okay so when you grab the wire then the direction that your fingers are curling in they're kind of doing this motion around the wire here. Uh, that's how um, we would know the direction of the magnetic field that's generated by this current. Okay, so this is a good right hand rule for us to add in. And this one is actually very simple to implement, right? The last thing here I want to make sure that you guys remember is that we have this constant mu naught is our permeability of free space. We're going to be using this a lot in these sections. It's just 4 pi times 10 to the minus 7, right? So the units here can get a little weird. There's a lot of different sets of units we can use at this point. But as long as you recognize it here, you know, you should be um, safe to use it. Okay, so now I'm going to take this wire. And I know it's creating a magnetic field. But we also know from the previous modules that magnetic fields will also affect other moving charges. So what if... I took my wire right here, and now I put a second wire next to it that's also carrying current. Well, this wire is going to create a magnetic field, right? So we'll kind of draw this out a little bit further and a little bit further. Okay, so there's going to be a magnetic field now that is moving essentially into the page at this point. So it's going to be perpendicular to the charges that are moving in this wire. So this magnetic field is going to exert a force on this wire. Okay, so just like we did before. So just because the charges are inside a wire doesn't mean that it changes the rules. They still experience a force due to this magnetic field. So the way that we can actually, uh, we can describe what this force is, is we can use this formula right here. So this is a formula and the only thing that's difficult to use about this formula because the parts are very simple we know all of them right so the only thing here we've got length 
of wire, okay? Uh, and this is the length of wire right here that I've noted that is being affected by the field. We're only considering some length. Remember, we already said this length here was uh, in infinite, right? We could also say that this length here is infinite, but we're only looking at one little section that's being that's having a force applied to it. So here we are going to have our length of wire. Now the tricky thing is where do we get our variables from? Do we get it from a source or do we get it from the target, right? So from I1 or I2. So here I'm going to say I1 is my source. And I'm going to say our I2 is my target. Maybe this will make it a little bit easier for us to understand. So this is the force right here. Force on target due to source. Okay. So our source is creating a magnetic field and the force from that source uh, is acting on the target, right? So now we know, so I can also sum this up by saying the force of one on wire two, force of wire one on wire two, okay? So the amount of force that it experiences, that, that wire two experiences, is going to be the magnetic field from our source and the current, okay, this current right here is going to be, well, I'm not gonna say from, I'm just gonna put target current. Okay, so this would be I2. So pretty much how much current is flowing in this wire what is the length of wire we're looking at, okay? And um, what is the magnetic field acting on the source at that point? So remember, the way that we find this, how do we find what is the magnetic field at this point? Well, we'll use this formula right here. So we could combine these formulas also where we could say the force of one on two, okay, is I2. I'm going to call this L2 just so we remember it's from our second wire. And then here, I'm going to put this as mu naught I over 2 pi R, just making sure I have all this exactly right. And this is I1. Oops, sorry, I put I I. Uh, this is I1. And our the radius here is the distance between the two. So here, out here, this is my radius. How far are these two apart from each other? So just so you know, we can combine these two formulas together. But otherwise, the pieces, you already know how to use them. Just, it's a little bit tricky to keep track of, you know, which wires are we considering here. Now, just so you guys know, this wire is also exerting a force on wire one, right? So you could do this backwards as well and find what is the force that I2 is exerting on I1, okay? The last one here for magnetic field from a wire is, okay, we had our wire here in a straight line. What if we um, loop this wire around, right? So if I make a loop, so we know if I make a loop with my wire just like this, and I have my current moving in that loop, so just one loop, um, then you'll use your right hand rule. So thumb pointed kind of towards a clockwise direction here, and then you, what will happen with your fingers is inside the loop, the magnetic field will be coming out, right? And outside of the loop, it will be going into the page. So you do this kind of all the way around, and this will follow all the way around and the magnetic field on the inside will also be always the inside. So it'll go no matter which direction you're facing, your fingers will always curve in the same direction, kind of like you're holding a steering wheel here. Um, so 
your fingers will always be pointing back towards you from the inside and away from you on the outside. So the way that we can use this is what if we make a bunch of loops, all right? We want to amplify this effect because if I do this twice, if I make two loops, well, the magnetic field becomes even stronger, right? Because I'm doing one magnetic field from one loop and then another from another loop. And then we'll just keep doing this over and over and over. And what we can do is we can actually make a solenoid. A solenoid is going to be um, a magnetic field that's generated by loops of these wires. So it's gonna look just like this. We have some current running through, and then what will happen when we have this current running through here is we will create a magnetic field inside, okay? And it'll be amplified, but it'll be kind of a straight line inside. It's just this kind of uh, on a side view now, all right? And the way that we describe this is with this formula right here. There are a few parts that we want to look at. N here is the number of loops. L is the length of my solenoid, total length, okay? And then I is the current, the amount of current that we're using, and mu naught is our trusty permeability of free space. So this one is very simple to use as long as we remember um, all of our parts here, number of loops, length, current, uh, so there's not much here to trip us up unlike in the two-wire example up above. And the last formula here, guys, we want to look at is magnetic field flux. And this one is the simplest one. Nice, short, sweet for us to do. Um, this is the magnetic field that flows through some certain area, just like when we did electric flux. Okay, super, super similar idea. Okay, and this is my magnetic field dot product with my area. Okay, so this area right here so if we want to rewrite this formula because I have some area let's say I have some rectangle of length times width and I have a magnetic field running through it all right this is great um, so this would just be my magnetic field times my area right great but what if I turn this plane now so it's not completely perpendicular to my field now it's at some angle here we show the normal, the perpendicular to, uh, sorry, the normal to my surface now makes an angle with my magnetic field. Well, in this case, for my dot product, I know that I can use the differences in their angle and put cosine theta in here. So instead of having to mess with our dot products here, we just do B, A, cosine theta. Okay, this should actually have a little vector symbol on it. Okay. So we have BA cosine theta. Um, so when our theta is zero degrees, like it was here, this is just equal to one, and it's just B times A. Or if I have an angle here, then I'll put that angle in here and I'll find my magnetic flux all the way until we lie completely flat. When um, once we have our window here completely parallel to our magnetic field, you can see from the picture that no magnetic field goes through, but we can also just put 90 degrees in here, and cosine of 90 will give me zero, make this whole thing zero. 